Welcome back to Weekend, where I'm joined by Alistair McGowan, and still to come, we've got music from Deacon Blue. Can't wait. But my next guest this morning has been an actor for more than 40 years, appearing in films like Brassed Off and Shakespeare in Love. The list is endless. But it's his portrayal of the grumpy but lovable butler, Mr Carson, in ITV's award-winning Downton Abbey that's won him international fame. Uh, fresh from filming Series 5, please welcome the one and only Jim Carter. <laughs> How are you? Oh, well, nice to see you. <laughs> Series five. Oh my God! Yes, Are you so fed up talking yeah, about it? <laughs> well, not really. You can't be because people enjoy it so much, and they approach us with such um, enthusiasm. So that's lovely. Yeah. Did you ever expect it to be so popular? Well, I knew that it had a chance. I mean, I was in it, you know. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's all down to you. <laughs> of course. No, no, not at all. You, um, we were shown three episodes five years ago and said, would you sign up for three series as a result of those? And then it just, uh, it took off and, uh, and particularly in America, they, they, they've gone mad for it. Uh, are you mobbed there constantly now? Well, I'm recognised all the time. I've just come back um, and uh, in the, I'm recognised much more in the street in America than I am in England. I mean, really? I, I think, well, in Eng yeah. well, in England, I think people go about, in London in particular, they go about their own business with their head down. Um, but in America, they're very open and come up and embrace you and these dreadful self... self <laughs> 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 oh, how terrible. Terrible. <laughs> it's a nightmare, darling. Every, every time I see uh, an event mm. from America these days, you guys are always on the red carpet. Are you never here now, then? No, uh, oh, I'm, I'm here all the time. You know, my life is very firmly centred here, but uh, we, were out, we were out for the Emmys. I think 12 nominations for the programme in the Emmys uh, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, so that was very... And what about, and what about the, the direction that they're taking your character this series? Yeah, we're in 1924. Uh, poor old Carson, who's such an old stick in the mud, is worried because there's dreadful things happening, like women getting education, and there's a there's a <laughs> Labour government, and the the earth is shaking beneath his feet, and there's there's the usual recipe of scandals upstairs, and Lady Mary and Lady Edith, I, oh dear, oh dear, <laughs> and Bates and Mrs Bates, uh, all all sorts of. Um, and what about you? Uh, and uh, on the romance front? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carson's romance with Mrs. Hughes moves at a glacial pace. It's a lovely relationship, <laughs> it, though. It is a lovely relationship, and I love working with Phyllis uh, Logan, who plays Mrs. Hughes. But it's uh, we're not, you know, uh, love's young dream. No. We, 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 we proceed in a stately manner towards, hopefully, a happy ending. And, and a couple of and a couple of names mentioned with this series, Sue Johnson and Richard E. Grant. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is great. She's playing a... Um, I think she's going to be an ongoing character. Um, what great casting that is. Yeah, fabulous. And she's, uh, she's just fitted right into the family, sort of, straight away. Um, I worked with Sue in Brastoff. We had a great time together, so it's lovely to hook up with her again. Richard E. Grant came in flamboyantly. <laughs> uh, he, he was an upstairs character, I have to tell you. You, you might have guessed. You can't come in any other way, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Always flamboyant. Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so so great to have an injection of, of new fun people in in, in the show. Um, yeah, really nice. Um, you're going to be on your bike soon. I am. Alid, oh, God. In um, five weeks' time, I'm going cycling charity bike ride in Madagascar, uh, which I'm very excited about. I just went to serve for a briefing about it recently, and it just looks fantastic. It's going to be tough. It's about uh, 50 miles a day you've got to cycle, isn't it? 50 or 60 miles a day. On really rough roads. Rough roads. It's going to be hot. They say there's mountains in Madagascar. Mm -hmm. I'm good on the downhills. <laughs> okay. I'm really good on the downhills. So I'm training at the moment, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Because you've, you've done charity <laughs> bike rides before as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've done a lot. Um, uh, uh, this will be, I think, my 13th. I've Goodness been to me. Jordan, Costa Rica, Laos, Vietnam, India, Namibia, Chile, uh, all, all sorts of places, wow, just... which has been a great adventure, really exciting. And I'm, I'm doing it for a wonderful charity that Imelda, my wife, Imelda Staunton... You, She's you, been on. You know, yes. Yeah, she, she probably sat on this very she, Exactly there, actually. Uh, we're both patrons of a lovely children's hospice in the East End called Richard House, so... Um, I'm raising money for them, and uh, it's going well so far. I mean, the, the, the training's going well and the fundraising's going well. You talked about you wanting to, you know, uh, let go of the energy. Um, a lot of people might not know that you were trained in circus skills. I did. You took yourself off to the US, didn't you? You've done your research, you tinker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, um, in my 20s, not as a kid, I, I went to New
do a, a show outside my local pub in Maida Vale. <laughs> And we stretched this rope between a lamppost and we had these big Aussie um, barmen pulling on the other end. And I was walking along it and, because I was I'm heavy, so this thing was going down. They were pulling, so it was bouncing. And then I had these flaming torches that I was juggling with. And I got this sensational round of applause, and I think the trick actually merited. <laughs> and I realised the reason for it was I'd set fire to the tree above me. <laughs> <laughs> <And> there was <laughs> branches cascading, <laughs> never to be repeated. Have you yeah. ever been on a unicycle? Could you unicycle I, on one of your I rides? have been right. on a unicycle. I, I couldn't unicycle on a tightrope. Oh, Always yeah. wanted to go But on a there unicycle. are photos yeah. of you juggling on a unicycle as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be able to do that. Used, ooh, in my, ooh, in my youth, I led. Oh, What's I, the secret with a unicycle? Is it all about clenching your... Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's about just getting going, launching off and pedalling as fast as you can, really. And the, then the one day, the balance just... Because there's 360 ways to fall off a unicycle, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're around in a circle. Yeah. Uh, and you can go down a corridor for as long as you like, you'll never learn. You've just got to launch yourself and then you get two and then you get three rotations and then yeah. suddenly, with my hips, of course... You know, it's, it's just... Obviously, I can see a DVD coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Learn how to unicycle yeah. with Jim Carter. Yeah. I'd buy it. I think I might struggle now. I haven't been on a unicycle for, for quite a while. Well, right? funny you should say that. We've got... No, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Sit tight. Mm -hmm. um, good luck with everything. Downton, oh, uh, the cycle ride. Uh, such a delight to see you. And I'm Fancy. glad I've had husband and wife on this series. Brilliant. Uh, time for some music. And today it comes from uh, one of my favourite bands, Deacon Blue. So far in their career...